we live in that state of firmness, you're not firm anymore. You're just nagging. I don't want you to fall into that trap. We all hear about feel. We hear about timing. Feel, timing give you balance. But what the heck is balance? Let's talk about that. We have physical balance. The horse being on the forehand, or the horse leaning back, or the horse being balanced from left to right. So we have physical balance. I have physical balance. He has physical balance. But then we also have the horse's emotional state. So can I ride my horse down and truly relax? And can I do that on demand? Like a light switch, poof, you relax. By contrast, could I get his life up? If I want movement and energy, can we get that life up? Could I bring that life down? Now, you've heard woe matches go, right? Woe matches go. And that's fine. That's kind of an oversimplification of what you're doing there. But it's important that I can get his life to come down just as much as we can bring the life up. So sometimes we'll work on slow. I'll work on slow and low, long and low, nice and easy. Just we might settle in there. I might work on left leg back, right leg at the girth. We'll see if we can affect that hindquarters a little bit. Good? And I'll play with that. And I'll get my horse feeling for me a little bit. He's kind of looking at what's ahead of him. So I'll just kind of work with that hindquarters a little bit. But nice and slow, nice and easy. And then I need to know that if I sit up, we're going. So the life has to have a balance. The horse's response needs to be balanced. So here's a little guideline or a little exercise or a little indicator that I like to teach you. Now, I've learned this from, from a few really amazing horsemen. And they would ask me a question. They would say this. They would say, and they would phrase this two ways. They might ask me, Jack, how soon could you halt? Or they might say, Jack, how little does it take to halt? Now, do you see the difference in the question? So if I were to say, how soon could I halt, I might get firmer sooner to get a horse to feel for what I'm asking. If I were working on cantering, I might get a little firmer sooner. Now, that's not refined. It's to sharpen our horse's response. Using how soon will sharpen your horse. But that's different than if we were to say, how little does it take to canter? So once I do a time or two of how soon, that was pretty soon, then I start getting into how little. Ah. And that gives you balance. That gives you equilibrium. So when you hear about feel and timing, people don't always explain the balance part so much, do they? And there's a physical balance. There's a mental balance. But that how little and how soon is a great way for you to kind of judge your horse. And some people live in the how littles. If you're always trying to do it with very little, eventually your horse will stop being responsive. Have you ever heard the phrase respond to respect or response gives you respect? Now, you all hear a horse has to respect you, right? You hear that a lot. But what does that mean? The appropriate response, that tells me, does my dog respect me? Does my horse respect me? It's how they respond. That's all it is. Respect is in the response of the horse. So if you live in the how littles, eventually your horse goes, well, what if I don't? And we might sit there and go, oh, well, I'll just give you some more time, and pretty soon your horses get sluggish and dull. Then there's those of us who live in the how soon moment. Have you ever seen a rider that everything is fast? They snatch, snatch, snatch. Everything's fast. How fast can they go? How fast can they stop? Can they bend their horse? So some folks re really work on the speed, but what happens when you're always working on speed? 
what, is, what happens to their brain? Yeah. They, they, get, they get scared of you. You go out to catch them one day, they look at you and they go, you're too much like work, right? So we have this as a balance. So I hope that makes sense, that how little and how soon. All right, now, all of this talk of aiding with your seats and your core and your Kreutz aids and using your abdomen and all that stuff, it doesn't mean anything to your horse if your horse isn't responsive and willingly forward. We want a horse to be calm, forward, straight. But I do need forward. So if my horse is waiting until he has to do something, so I say walk and he waits until we squeeze and I squeeze and my leg comes up and I tip forward and I cramp up his sides because I'm driving my leg into him and he, he walks and he goes, uh, and he walks. Boy, the seat won't matter. What we have to do is get our horses responsive to our center, to our seat, and to our upper body position. I'll give you an exercise that we can all do with our horses at home. And here it is. We're going to start with the first one, and that would be I'm going to squeeze and release my reins, my abdomen, my upper thigh to halt. And then I might back up a step or two. I'm going to sit tall, tuck my seat, open the leg, and if he doesn't go, I'd bump. But notice I'm coiling him back. I'm sitting back before I sit up and tuck my seat. Now, tucking the seat, what does that mean? Well, it's almost like in dressage, we say a driving seat. And a driving seat would be like this. If I were going to push up the saddle a little closer to his ears, if I were going to take my seat and slide the saddle up, nudge the saddle up a little closer to his ears, that would be a driving seat. And I would tuck my tailbone under. Now the sitting up part, well, they're herd animals. So when their herd mates come up in the air, they all come up in the air. They, when their head is down, they're grazing and they're relaxed. Their energy and their life is off. And then all of a sudden, all of a sudden something scares the horse. And one horse lifts their head and they lift their tail up, right? And then what do all the other horses do? They all lift, yeah, they all flag and they lift their tail up. So our upper body sitting up is so important. Because if I sit up, I'm conveying to my horse life. If I sit here, I'm conveying ugh, slow. So if I combine sitting up, tucking the seat, and opening the leg, I open up a door, and my horse can go through that door. How many of you learned to squeeze your horse to go? Come on, don't, don't lie. All right. <laughs> Squeezing your leg is a great way to get lift, suspension, elevation. And if you don't believe me, just get on a young colt and squeeze both of your legs first thing. And where are they going to go? They're not going to go forward. They're going to go up. They're going to go, you want my back up? Whoop, there it is. Save squeezing for lift, suspension, elevation. Save it for later. Save it for later. This, the squeezing of the leg is not important anyway. It's what you do with your seat and your Kreutz aids. So I open my leg. So what I do, and from that open leg, it's possible that if I had to, I could bump them because my leg's already off of them. So I sit up, I tuck my seat, I open leg, and if I had to, I could bump or I could kick if I needed to. I don't want to bump on my horse, but you get the idea. Now, when I use my leg and I would bump with my leg, I want you to think of this. Keep your leg very relaxed. Don't tighten up your muscles in your thigh or in your calves. Don't do that. What I want you to do is this. Think about from the hip and the knee down, loose leg. So this is how I get firm with my leg. Ready? I keep my leg loose. I keep my leg loose. Now, a person could get pretty firm. See? A person could get pretty firm with that. But I'm not going to kick and hold. I'm not going to squeeze because we're just going to tighten up their muscles. So I sit up. I tuck my seat. 
I could open the leg, and pretty soon my horse goes, I'm going, Jack, I'm going, I'm going. You don't need, you don't need to do that bumping, that bumping thing.